Okay, in this video we're going to examine a property called torque. This is an important property for rotational motion because that's what actually causes the rotational motion. So where force causes linear motion, either it produces the velocity or the acceleration of the, of the object, torque is what causes the rotational velocity or the rotational acceleration of objects. Now it does turn out to be based on force, so that is to say the more force you apply to an object, the more torque you can get and therefore the more rotation. But the, there are two other things that are really important about that. Uh, number one is, where is the force applied? So we take the product of the force and the lever arm, and the lever arm is the distance between the pivot point and the, where the force is applied. So that is to say that the farther that you apply the force away from the pivot point, the, the more torque that you would be able to get from that. And then lastly, the angle that you apply that force makes a difference. So the equation would be written like this, and the symbol for torque is the Greek letter tau, which looks something like that. And it turns out to be the product of three things. So first the force, two the lever arm, and three the angle between those, which is going to be measured according to the sine of the angle. And we'll, we'll see why it's the sine of the angle in just a moment. So just to make sure that we're clear on everything, so this is the new product, a uh, new property called torque, and F is the force, that would be a Newton's, R is called the lever arm, and that would generally speaking be in units of meters, although you could use any, in theory anything that you wanted to. <clears throat> and then lastly is theta, and theta is the angle between F and R. Sorry, lowercase r. Okay, now this is a really important aspect and it's, it's gonna become more and more important as we get move on to deeper into this topic. The units for this thing, so the units for the sine of an angle, the sine of an angle has no units because again, the sine is a ratio of two sides. So there are no units to it. So the units come from only F and R and in this case, The units for force are newtons. The units for R, the lever arm, will be in meters. So those are newton meters. Okay, so really important thing to understand about that is even though those are units of energy, newton meters are a unit of energy, it's the wrong distance. It's the wrong displacement to put in. So the R here is not how far that force was applied over, it's how far away from the pivot point. So it's not the right displacement in order to produce units of energy, even though arguably newton meters are units of, of energy. So let's take a look at the, this business about the, the angle between the two. Um, let me give you a really simple drawing here. So let's imagine that we have a metal rod which is connected to a pivot point and this thing can rotate around in either direction, counterclockwise or, or clockwise. So if you imagine that we're going to apply a force here at this point at the very tip, okay, and there is some angle between that bar and the force, the force is not being applied at a right angle and also not being applied uh, perpendicular. Um, the lever arm in this case is simply how far away the pivot point is from the point where the force was applied. Okay, but now the question is, so there's the F and there's the R, but then the question is, do I get torque from all of this force? So if you can imagine this force being broken up into two parts, one part would look like this, and one part would look like this. Okay, and this angle, just for the record, would be the same as the angle over here because we have two parallel lines, we have a transversal cutting them, these are opposite interior angles, and so they're going to be equal to each other, and in this case, this would be F times the, sorry, cosine of theta, this is the adjacent side, and this would be F times the sine of theta. Well, you can imagine that if I apply a force in the direction that this force is showing, uh, that's not going to produce any torque at all. Right? So if I take a force and I apply a force in this direction to the rod, the, the rod will not rotate. Similarly, if I apply a force in this direction, the rod will not rotate. Only when I apply a force sideways to the rod am I going to get some torque or some rotation from this thing. So this turns out to produce nothing. This does not produce any torque, but this one does. So the equation for torque is F sine theta. 
That is the component of the force which is pointed perpendicular to the lever arm and then multiplied by the lever arm, right? And so then obviously we recollect those terms. It's a little bit more convenient to put the two primary properties, which is the force and the lever arm. And then we just move the sine of theta to the, to the end. <clears throat> but ultimately, the reason why that sine of theta is there is because it reduces the value of the force to only that portion of it which is perpendicular, that portion which is actually contributing to the rotational motion. And that portion of it which is not contributing, we ignore because that does not produce any, any torque. Um, so let's just finalize this business about the, the introductory idea of torque by, <clears throat> let's look at a, a door. I'm gonna make kind of a strange door. I'm not quite putting the hinge in the right place. But just to simplify the picture, Uh, so, for example, uh, if we were to apply a force here to the door to push the door open, we'll say that that is F1, or we were to apply a force here, F2, we would clearly be obvious that F2, sorry, let me rephrase that, the torque from 2 will be greater than the torque from 1. Okay, and if, because the forces are the same, we're going to apply the same force to different parts of the door, but because the R is larger for F2, the F times R is going to be larger for this one. If we, for example, were to grab the doorknob and pull straight out this way with that same force, that would produce no torque. If we put a force going in the opposite direction, we were to push on the doorknob like this, then we would also get no torque. So torque 3 is equal to torque 4 and that is equal to zero. There is no torque from those uh, forces pushing along the lever arm or against lever arm. Just think about the angle, right? So the sine of this one, the angle here, it's pointing in the same direction as the lever arm, so the sine of zero is zero. Over here, it's 180 degrees. The lever arm points to the right. The force points to the left. The two uh, are in opposite directions, 180 degrees apart from each other, and as a result, uh, we end up with no uh, torque acting on this object. Now, on the other hand, if we apply the same force here, F5, we will get more torque than any other situation so far. Um, but if we take that same force and apply it at different angles, these will still produce torque but they will have to be reduced by the angle between them. So I would look at the angle between the lever arm and between the force, and that uh, angle has to be accounted for to reduce the value of the torque. So I won't get as much torque as I am capable of getting. Um, so the three things that I want to do to increase the amount of torque that I can get or increase the rotational motion is increase the force, increase the lever arm, or make the angle as close to 90 degrees as possible. So let's take a look at a few just kind of simple example problems. Um, let's just start one where let's just calculate the actual value of a torque. Uh, so in our first example, uh, Diana is going to apply a 63 newton force to a door 0.5 meters from the hinge, so that's approximately where the doorknob would be on a, on a door, at an angle of 75 degrees, and then calculate the torque that is applied to that particular door. So in this case, pretty simple problem. There's no algebra to do. You simply need to plug in the values. So in this case, the torque would be equal to... Uh, 63 times the lever arm 0 0.50 times the sine of 75 degrees and when you put that into your calculator you should see that uh, that will come out to be 30.4 and again the units for torque are Newton meters not a unit of energy but is actually the same units that would be in the units for work for example work would also be force times displacement but in this case, uh, it has no special name. It is, n is not a unit of energy in this particular example. It's just simply uh, Newton meters. Um, so one of the things that torque is really helpful in understanding is things like uh, bolts or wrenches, for example. So in the beginning, we looked at a picture of a, a wrench. Uh, there's a certain amount of torque required to loosen this bolt. There's a certain amount of torque required to tighten the bolt. And in many cases, it's a st there's a certain amount of torque that is required for the bolt to function properly. So there's a right amount of torque. It's not just that we want to increase the amount of torque, especially when you have metal parts against metal parts. You want to increase the torque um, until it reaches a certain value, and that's why we have devices called torque wrenches. So they will rotate, and then when they reach a point 
where it is reaching the value of the torque, it will either indicate to you that you're at that torque or it will stop allowing you to, um, to continue to rotate the, the object. So bolts, screws, these are all things that, um, that torque is, plays an important role in. And so let's take a look at an example of, of that. Um, so let's say that a certain bolt requires 390 uh, newton meters of torque to loosen. All right, and let's assume that in general, the most force that an average person can exert on something would just be equal to their weight. And that would be that you would hold the wrench, <clears throat> you would hold the wrench horizontally, and then you would push down on the wrench like this with all of your weight. You would lean on, you put everything on it that you have. That's generally speaking for most people, they cannot exert more force than that. Now, people who are very strong, obviously are capable of exerting more force, um, possibly than their own weight, but in general, an average person is going to is going to be most successful when they just use their weight to apply the force downward to the to the bolt. Um, whether they're taking like the the nut off of a like a tire, for example, uh, those require quite a lot of of force, and oftentimes the best thing you can do is to stand on the the bar that's connected to it to put as much torque as you possibly can by exerting a force equal to your weight. So in this particular example, we're talking about something that looks like this. So here is the R that we're talking about. Okay, and in this particular case, this is what we're going to be looking for. Because we know how much torque is required to turn this bolt or to loosen it. Um, the maximum force that this person can exert is 675 newtons. And so therefore, there is a certain length of wrench that will work. And then other wrenches just will not be long enough. They just will not allow this person to exert enough uh, force. So we're going to apply the force in a downward direction here. That force is equal to 675 newtons. The total torque required for this guy is 390. And so the equation says that torque is equal to F times R. Now, one thing I wanna point out to you is that I'm not putting the sine of theta in here because we're going to apply the force to this thing in a direction so that it is perpendicular, right? Because that's obviously how we're going to maximize our, our torque. And so in this particular case, if I wanna figure out, well, what is the lever arm? That would be the length of the wrench that I would be able to successfully take this piece off with. And that is gonna be the torque divided by the force. That is 390 divided by 675. And as a result, we're going to need to have a wrench that is at least 0 0.58 meters long in order to be able to loosen this bolt. Okay, using the her greatest force, which is simply her weight. Now, it's quite possible that you will not be able to find a wrench that is this long. I mean, this is a wrench that's 60 centimeters long. It's more than half the length of a meter stick. That's a pretty long wrench. Uh, wrenches like that do exist, but generally speaking, most people probably don't have a wrench like that. So the question is, how, how can she increase the amount of torque? Well, really, there's only three things that you can do. One is to apply more force. Right? But obviously in this case, that's not going to work because she's already applying the most force that she can possibly apply. So then the second thing is to increase the lever arm. We would want a longer lever arm. Okay, now that is actually possible. We might be able to pull off um, something like that by extending the lever arm, either with a different wrench, or there's ways that we can modify this wrench, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and then ultimately, we want F perpendicular to R. So if you have gone to your maximum force and you're already applying that force perpendicular, then the only thing left for you to do is to um, increase the length by using something like a pipe, for example. So that might look something like this. So if you imagine your wrench, So if you imagine a wrench like that, what we could do is take something like a pipe and take that pipe and put the handle inside of it, push the pipe on, and then instead of the R being this long, we would get an R that was this long. Right, so this is a simple thing that you can, you can do. I've used this technique myself to take a piece of pipe when I couldn't get a bolt uh, especially like on the sewer line, a lot of times those those don't get opened up very often, and so they tend to get corroded to the point where they just will not turn easily. Um, and so I I take a metal pipe that I have, a steel pipe, uh, it's about three or four feet long, and slide it over the handle, 
And then that allows me to, in some cases, get five or six times the amount of torque that I would have been able to get by just using the, the wrench at the length that it was. Um, another great example of that <clears throat> would be something like a screwdriver. So if you just think about what the lever arm for a screwdriver is, down here, the lever arm is teeny tiny. That is a tiny little radius um, to turn. So that means it's gonna exert a lot of force. Now on the side where the handle is, the radius is longer, but essentially the radius is not even really one centimeter. So when you try to turn this and it just, you just can't get it, you just can't get enough force. You just can't squeeze tight enough. You just can't get enough friction to hold this thing. Then what you would want to do is something like this. You would take a wrench and we would clamp that wrench on right here. And the advantage of clamping the wrench on right here is that look how much longer the lever arm is. So now here's the center axis of the rotation. Look how long, how far away I'm gonna be able to apply. I'm gonna be able to apply the force way down here. This is something like 20 uh, centimeters away as opposed to only one centimeter. So now I should be able to exert about 20 times the amount of torque that I was able to, to use before. It's like a simple technique. Increase your lever arm. It's gonna make it easier for you to rotate things. That's what the torque equation is is telling you.